Hello, my YouTube world. This is Johnny Mo. We're going to do deck top four. Um, <clears throat> just going to talk some more. Uh, I got some interesting comments in the comment section, so I'm going to do a quick video on it. Uh, like talking about decks, and apparently, you know, you guys are interested in it too. So let's go deck top four, baby. Weekend edition. The day before Motivational Monday. Um, got a great question from a guy who talked about how do I find out um, how how to find out whether the mowers are good or bad or if there's issues with them or and how do I go about you know make sure I get a demo and the whole nine so I'm going to take you through this process and what I do to find out um, about mowers and then go about getting them to bring them to my property um, so let's go first thing I do if I'm interested in a mower and I am interested in a mower and you know probably some of you have been contacted by me about some cutting uh, some cutting issues. You know, if you've owned a Skag, you probably got an email from me about me asking about the cutting conditions of it. Um, so I'm interested in Skag. I'm also interested in Bobcat. We have two dealers that are within 45 minutes. That is within the range. Anything above 45 minutes for me is out of limit. I'm not going to drive, you know, an hour and a half total round trip to pick up a mower. It's just too far. Don't have any, don't have uh, enough time in my schedule to do that when things break down. Okay, so very first thing I do is I go onto lawn site and what I'll do is I will type in the search and start to look down the comment section, say it was Bobcat. I would look at every comment that someone put on Bobcat and then I would go find the negatives. I would then go, once I find the negatives, is there more than one negative? If there's more than one negative, Generally, that means that tells me, and it's the same problem. There's a problem with that deck, and so I'll therefore eliminate it. I'll eliminate that from my pick before I even go doing any re any more research. Um, generally, what I find, what you have to be careful on lawn site and other forums like it, you have to be careful of the wanksters, and I'm very serious about this. Uh, I am so tired of wanksters portraying themselves like they have this million dollar business or this $500,000 business and they don't. And they're out there, they're commenting on every single post, on every aspect of business, and they're absolutely out in left field. You know, it even happens here on YouTube. Um, I will tell you that I don't make any negative comments on YouTube. I don't dislike anyone's video. As a matter of fact, I give you a lot of credit for getting behind a camera and saying, you know, giving your information. I might not agree with your information, but I will not, you know, dislike you, and I'm not going to comment badly about you. But I will tell you this. I hate wanksters. I hate guys that, that portray themselves to be something they're not. Uh, I can, listen, I can tell by the way you talk, or the way you post, and I can tell by everything. If, if you show me your equipment, I can tell your business size. I, honestly, you're like, no way. Oh, I've been around so long. I, I know exactly what you're doing. You know, you, all you do is show me your equipment and I can tell you. I can almost pinpoint your income level. You know, you got a 36 inch walk behind. At the top of your game, it's $50,000. I already know it because I already know what you can do. You've got to remember, I've been around this so long. It's 19, I mean, since 1996, I've been in this business. You're trading time for money. There's only so much a 36 inch walk behind can do to trade the time for the money. It's only an hourly business when it when you drop it all down. So, and, and the problem with forums is you'll get so many guys in there, and that's why I don't I don't comment on lawn site anymore. I get on there for search purposes only. I use lawn site and plow site. I have found with them too, you can generally find enough information um, to find out what you're looking for. Um, You'll get a lot of guys that only put 100, 150 hours a year on their mower, and they're pros. They can tell you they've only owned one brand of mower in their whole entire life, and they'll just tell you everything and anything, and they're a pro at it, and they're giving advice on everything. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I'm not saying you don't have an opinion. I'm saying that your perspective is limited, and you can't comment on it. That's just the truth. You know, I had a guy tell me, there was a time where we got so big, I had, I was getting... All my blades shipped out every week and cut. Um, I had a local lawn sharpener guy that was sharpening for five, and he told me I was a complete idiot. He sharpens his blades. 
And so I finally, I, he, after he called me an idiot about three or four times, I just said, what do you do in business? I mean, honestly, when, do I, when would I have time to sharp? Will you always have time, rain days? No, I change blades every two days. What are you talking about? When I was going, it was costing me about two, 225, 225 bucks to sharpen a big bucket of blades. I didn't have that kind of time. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, if you're cutting two hours a week, obviously you could sharpen your own blades. Please, don't comment on stuff you have no, you've no, re you're a wankster. You're acting like you're turning dollars, but you're not. I know. Oh, I can't stand that stuff. So anyway, be careful on lawn site. There's a lot of them. There are a lot of guys that portray themselves like they they've got you know two hundred thousand dollar businesses when the truth is they're cutting about ten thousand dollars a year in grass. They only put a hundred hours on the mower, but yet they'll come on they'll comment as if they've used every mower. And, and this is what ticks me off: the perspective of a person putting hundred hours a year on a mower, and someone like myself who puts minimum of seven. I put six hundred ninety one hours on my mower last year. I put an additional two hundred and fifty eight on another one. That's a lot of hours. You know, before we kind of slowed the mowing down, it was over 900 hours on a mower. So in three short years, my mowers are gone. You know, you're keeping your mower seven, eight years, and you still haven't hit 2,000 hours. Let's just chill. So you want to clarify the person that's making the comment. Make sure that he's actually in business. He's actually not just mowing his own lawn, and he's commenting on it. You want to make sure that he's actually putting some hours on. If you're putting on over 250 hours a year on that mower, I think that you're commercial and I think that you're really starting to approach where you can really start giving some information because, you know, once you get above 200 hours, you're putting some hours on that thing. You get above 500, you're really putting some hours on it and you really can comment. So what I'll do is I'll contact the person who has the negative post about the particular thing. I'll then decipher if he's been in business for a while, then decipher if he's putting hours on it. If he is, and, and the negative comment is true the decks eliminated one of the ones that I've eliminated just by doing this is, Hus is Hustler I also demoed it I had them bring it to me I cut about two acres it only took me about a half acre to figure it out this decks just ain't gonna cut the mustard Hustlers eliminated completely from my lineup never gonna own a Hustler alright second thing I do if I like the deck and I find there's a lot of solid comments about it on lawn site what I'll do is I'll contact the dealer. Say I'm interested in your product. If you, you know, if the dealer's not interested, and generally they're not interested in bringing a mower to you, they don't get paid. The only thing they get paid to do is to get you to come in and sign papers or spend cash on their mower. So generally they're not going to let you. They'll let you come in the back. They'll let you cut the back 40, which that's how they test all their broken machinery, see if it's cutting right, and they keep cutting, you know, cut grass. So what you want to do is you want to have them bring it to you. Me personally, I will not buy a mower unless I have put it on my lawns. How do I do that? I call the rep. When I go to these open houses, my whole goal is to put my hand in the rep's hand. I want to shake his hand. I want to talk to him. I want to get to know him. I want to know what he knows. Usually by talking to these people, you can tell if they're disgruntled with their companies. These are huge tips here. Find out, like I would go talk to an X mark. I'm going to give an example, X mark rep. And I'd go in there and and just start talking, hey, how's it going, man? How's the snow up in your area? It's been bad. Or, oh, Nilta, you're going on and on. You know, even buy him some lunch. You know, hey, man, are you hungry? I can go get you something real quick. And if he says, yeah, can I get you a pop? Can I get you a cop? What can I get you? And, and get them to talk. Ask them questions about themselves. How many kids do you have? How long have you been married? How long have you been at Exmark? And then, how's the company doing? Do you like the company? All of a sudden, once they relieve the wall, the wall or the mask of fakeness, they'll begin to open up. Man, you know what, man, this company, it's over the freaking top. I'm thinking about heading over here to another company. Uh, there's a clue. That means there's a change. You know, there's a change in leadership. There's a change going on. That's a clue whether you want to stay with them. These guys are over here checking out brand new mowers, and they're all looking at all the newest technology and all this and that. And I'm wanting to talk to the rep. We'll exchange numbers. Really enjoy talking to you. Can, here's my number. Can I have your number? Call them up, you know, send them a text message. Hey, enjoy talking to you the other day. Looking forward to uh, talking more about your product. Can you... You know, just that. And then all of a sudden, a couple weeks after that, I'll call them up. We'll schedule 
a meetup so I can go cut my lawns at my time. And generally, they 100% always will come in their enclosed trailer and drop it on your properties. And you can go send them to go get a cup of coffee and you can go cut your neighborhoods. I've never had an issue. I've always been able to get them. Wright, Ferris, Simplicity, um, Toro, Xmark, uh, who else? Um, Snapper Pro. They've all brought theirs to me and I've always been able to do it. And here's what I do. I always make them bring it at 9 o'clock in the morning. If you can't come at 9 o'clock in the morning, you must not want my business. Come at 9 o'clock so I can cut some dewy grass. And then I can kind of get a feel. I always let the, if, if I know they're coming, I'll let that grass go to 8 days and make sure there's some nice length on it. I want to see how it spreads it across the field. I want to see everything. I want to see the speed. I want to get it in a neighborhood where I have to go from this lawn and go block up. I want to see the speed on going to a block up. I want to see how it lays it out. I want to see the power of it. I want to see if the engine's good, uh, how the blade formation is. I want to put the mower up in the air off a trailer ramp, kind of look under there, see the baffle systems. That's what I do. 100% of the time, 100% successful. Um, get to know your rep in that area. These home shows are nice to go look at machinery. But put your hand inside the hand of a representative. That's what I do. That's how we do it here at Johnny Mo. And, um, you know, when I first started... You know, Brian from Top Notch asked me to have any trouble when I first started because I wasn't as big. And the reason why I didn't have any trouble back then is because we used Toro walk behinds. Back in 96, that was the big thing. You know, you had to walk behind with jungle wheels. You were the king of the hill. Well, then all of a sudden around, you know, 97, 98, this company started to really make a put, make a push, which is called Xmark. Xmark started coming out. They ruled, they absolutely ruled the roost around here. I mean, everyone had an Xmark. And, you know, you just didn't have a, a big decision. Either it was a Toro walk behind or an X Mark rider. And, I mean, that's just how it went. But then when Toro started to reintroduce their, their zero turns and other companies started to come in, now you actually have competition. Now you actually need to do your homework and research. So that's what I do. First thing I do is I go on lawn site to see if there's any negative comments, see how many people like them. I then try to decipher whether this person's actually using the mower for business or if he's actually just cutting him and his neighbor's lawn for fun. Um, and then after that, I'll contact that person about the negative advice and see what he do, what he did to reconcile it or what he's doing now or he's just putting up with it. And that's how I do it. I hope that helps. That's Deck Talk. This is Deck Talk 4. And we've got Motivational Monday coming up. And I want to tell you about a video I'm about to do um, on how to tell your time. I read a great book a couple years ago. It was called Tell Your Time. So I want you to pick up that book. I want you to read it because we're now, this week, we're going to go over scheduling. Right now, I'm starting to put my schedule into my gopher, uh, my computer program. It's going to schedule all my lawns for the whole year. And so I'm going to teach you how to go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and schedule in. In this business, for you to be successful, you got to tell your time. You cannot just fly by to see their pants. Because remember, this video, I mean, this, this business is about putting money in your pocket. That's how you decide if you win or lose. It's not about your equipment, whether you got 36 inches or where you got 60 inches. It's about how much profit you have at the end of the year. I'm going to teach you on some of the little tips and tricks on what I do to, to schedule my lawns and how I do it. So stay tuned this week. Got some great videos coming up. This is Deck Talk 4. Really enjoyed the Deck Talk this week. You guys have a great week.